Good My name's Gary Schofield, OBE, and this is Memory Lane. Great stadium like this, and 23,000 people, you know, packed in here at Ellen Road. And who would afford it for a, you know, a Yorkshire Cup final, a, a County Cup final? But uh, but both teams were in great form. When you look at finals, you know, it's it's a matter of uh, you know starting well. And boy, oh boy, did we uh, did we start pretty well. And Castleford put us under a lot of pressure. And uh, and to be honest with you, you know, we we gave a penalty away, and the Casford were attacking our try line. I think it was around about the third or fourth minute, and. Um, yeah, I knew something was happening. I knew something was happening from Cass and was going to move the ball pretty early in the tackle count. And uh, it was around about, I would say, yeah, 75 yards out then. I knew the ball was going to be moved wide. And Grant, he never saw me coming, straight into the bread basket. Oh, an interception by Gary Schofield. Chapman's going across to try and nail him. Schofield's got 40, 50, 55, 60 yards. And Schofield is in for the first try. right to smile it's his stocking trade the interceptions is not to be coached it's something that was instinctive and i tell you what i would say the interceptions what i did take when i was playing at hull and certainly when i played at leeds is that i would say my my, my, my ratio would i would say around about 95 percent so one thing for sure the players knew that if they was going to sling a 15 20 yarder I was going to get on the end of them. And when you look at the uh, the field goal, what, what I got from there, it was around about 30 yards out. With Lions, I saw was calling for the ball there. Gary Schofield attempts to drop a goal, and a roar tells you that he's successful. Well, if he's not scoring tries, he's dropping goals. It wasn't nothing what was planned. I was stuck in the middle of the field. I was 30 yards out, and I thought, well, what do I do here? I thought, I'll tell you what, I'll try a one-pointer. It wasn't planned. It was just an instinctive thing. I was very happy that, uh, that it, it got the point for us and uh, took a bit of pressure off. So I say, yeah, the drop call just took a bit of pressure over because Casford were coming back into this game very well. As I said, with the quality players, well, they had, they always were going to do that. And uh, I say, they scored a great try themselves. You know, classic Cass, that's what they wore, and you expected that with the beard moors, with Kevin Ward and with John Joyner, as I've mentioned from there and all. And yeah, the great try they scored. Giles Bouvroy just on the uh, on the left hand side got them back into the game there. And Crooksy then, I tell you, that was the best game Crooksy ever played for Leeds. I can reassure you, he was absolutely outstanding. Broke the line. Gary Spencer, who was a quality. Loose uh, uh, full back for Hood. He was even keeping Ettinghausen now. Ettinghausen couldn't get in at full back because the way that Spencer were playing. Great support player from Gary, and I was just on the right hand side. Oh, Brooks has broken through, and he's got at least three men alongside him. One of them is Spencer, the second is Schofield, and they won't stop him. Schofield second. What an astonishing fellow, and we're running out of superlatives for the man. Just, just before half time, John Joyner goes in from there, and I'll tell you what, boy oh boy, was that a forward pass? Every time we see JJ now, we say to him a forward pass, and John is always, always uh, very dignified. He said, No way, score it, nowhere near a forward pass. I'll tell you what, the referee never changed his mind, so they got themselves back into the game there now. And half time, I think the scoreline was around about 15 12. And to be honest, the team talk were quite simple. Malcolm was very happy, certainly from the start, and the momentum we, we, was, we, we created in that first 40 minutes. So the team talk was quite simple. Listen, fellas. Same again, keep doing what you're doing, and, uh, and I say the breaks will come in the second half. Again, it was all Cass, they were putting the pressure on and certainly uh, attacking uh, yeah, our trial line just down on the right hand side. But Carl Gibson, I tell you what, what a, what a classic player Carl Gibson was, whether he's playing in the centres or whether he was on the wing. And 10 yards out from his own trial line, as you can see the length of this pitch, there was nowhere near that anybody was going to stop him. The pace what Gibbo had. Beardmore, China, along the line. So again, you know, we, we, we got a bit of uh, we got a bit of a platform on the scoreboard. To be honest with you, from there. But again, we were still looking. We were still looking to pass that ball. And, and I say, my centre partner, David Stevenson, what a quality centre he was as well. And I say, keep Gibbo out in the centre because Gibbo, you know, we just knocking on the door for the Great Britain selection. And yeah, great ball movement again. And, and, and well, Carl Gibson, I think it's around about 40 uh, 40 metres out again on the far left hand side from there. And who? Who did he decide to take on the outside? The Australian fullback in Gary Belcher. As Stevenson cuts a hole of the defence in Carl Gibson goes down the touchline and he's made it! A 
Brown is turning into Carl Gibson's match now. The high skip says it all. Try number two for Carl Gibson to go with the two for Gary Schofield. And all the joy is on the lead side. And then, and I say, just at the end, Castleford, you know, the scoreline on the board, they wasn't going to come back into it because, and I say, we were playing so well defensively, we were very strong, and, uh, well, the super sub himself, wasn't he? Uh, <clears throat> when you look at, we look at today's game, the impact people want to play, but I tell you what, Paul Medley, you know, I think he scored around about four, four tries in the competition, building up to the final, coming off the bench from there, and there's no better than Meadows, wasn't it? You know, 30 yards out, that big left-hand fence from there, and the pace what he had, the cast of the defenders would have get nowhere near him. Great impact what he made, great try, and the Yorkshire Cup were coming back to Edinley. Schofield there showed his unselfishness, he could have gone. Cliff Lyons pierces holes in the defence of Paul Medley, goes rampaging for the corner and makes it. So Paul Medley keeps up his remarkable scoring record in the Yorkshire Cup. It's the fourth try he's got in five games. Having come on a substitute every time, Paul Medley milks the applause. Well, beefy England, you know, to tell you what, I play with Keith at a great bit. If there's anybody wanting the trenches at the side here, it would be uh, Keith England because he never took a backward step. Maybe a bit in discipline, went round Steve or went around the chops. We decided, I'll tell you what, we've had enough of scoring the tries. We'll take the easy option, we'll have the two points. Stevenson puts boot to ball and it sails straight through the sticks. And he's had a great day and he's now picked up in the Yorkshire It was all about who wanted to be the champions of Yorkshire and that day, it was a classic game, the scoreline may have, may have said that it was a one-sided game, alright, it wasn't that one-sided because Castleford, they ripped in, but what they did, they contributed to a great and a classic Yorkshire Cup final.